Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many of Tasneem and Munir's loved ones could not attend tonight. Hey guys, Sazie Faye here. How is it going? All right, so getting married is a very strange experience. About a year and a half ago or a year ago, I made a video titled 28 Brown and Unmarried and it did really well. So I am going to make a follow-up video similar to that one titled 29 Brown and Married about, you know, how odd of an experience and time it is because it's, um, Interesting, but for today's video, I'm gonna talk about the roller coaster that I rode for a year and a half whilst planning a wedding. And as I say in corporate America, I have looped in a few people, you know, CC'd them, if you will, on this email thread. Sorry that the alarms keep going off. Basically, it snowed in Texas. We have no electricity and everything keeps making noises, so apologies for that. We'll talk to a couple YouTubers about their wedding experience as well as the wedding photographer who very talentedly captured my nuptials. I don't like the word nuptials. I don't understand what it is or where it's derived from, so I'm sorry, but I, there's something about the way that word sounds to me that I don't like it. So these are not like Harvard validated statistics or anything like that, but if you Google the average cost of an American wedding, it's about like 30 grand. So that's only one day of events. And as some of you may know, Desi weddings, there are events for the events. Take that number, multiply it by two, three, seven, I don't know. So naturally your average Desi or Indian American wedding is going to be, I would say like 60 to 200K. That's another Google statistic. I'm not sure if it's verified or not. And I was always that person who was like, nah man, my wedding's gotta be low key, like so low key that Thor shows up. And then we say I do not marry outside of my religion, but we can still talk about it. JK, JK. I ended up with Desi John Stamos, so that's, um, you know, I got, I got a good deal. It's fine, no complaints. But seriously, I wanted something super simple. But as the eldest child in an immigrant family, if you think I was gonna be like, it's my life, I do what I want, you're stupid. And the funny thing is the people who tell you, you know, you should just stand your ground and do, you know what? You never had strict parents and it shows. Either that or you weren't the eldest child. Somebody's gotta hold it down. Like your size of strict parents is, I could swim in how loosey-goosey it is. So I started the roller coaster as simple as possible, knowing that we were probably gonna have a lot of guests, but I had no expectations as far as everything else. I was like, whatever. But then I attended a wedding of one of my friends from college and it was a full blown Indian wedding, you know, all the events, everything, super fun. And I was like, man, this is great. Like as a guest, this is amazing. Why wouldn't I give this to my guests? Like this is, Awesome. And I started to see the value in things like culture and tradition because I was like, dude, this is so special. There's something about it that it's like, it's so festive and everyone's enjoying themselves. It really feels like, you know, just like YOLO. So I came a full 180 from thinking that weddings were a complete waste of money and time and all this stuff. And I ended up planning a three day, four event wedding, several venues, all kinds of stuff. And I'm a very organized individual. So I had spreadsheets, I had budgets, I had read and signed contracts, put down deposits, Closets, ordered a bunch of stuff off the internet, and then here, COVID happened. Yep. And then all the work that I did for nine months, a whole human being can be created in a uterus in that amount of time. All that work that I did, <laughs> down the drain. Everything was uncertain. And now back to square one. Except no one knows anything and we're tied up in all these contracts and deposits. After several assertive messages and a few aggressive ones, we had the ability to shrink the wedding back down and we just decided in the end to just have it at home. I think Colorado took COVID pretty seriously, was pretty strict about it. So we had about half the amount of people that were allowed and a fraction of the original guest list. So I was on the internet and I found this YouTuber named Aida. She had some videos about relationships and marriage and weddings. So I reached out to her to see if she thought I would be missing out because I had to shrink down the wedding. Whether you have a small wedding or a big wedding, at the end of the day, it's about having that baraka of, you know, the prayers of your family and your friends. And you can have that whether you do it via Zoom or whether you do it in a, in a gathering. Um, and whatever Allah has written for you, that's the best for you. So Allah wrote that I have like a like a festive wedding and that was the best for me. And if you were to have like a small wedding, that's the best for you. Um, obviously, the issue that we need to be um, transparent with is about money. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, if it was not within my means to do a big wedding, mm -hmm. um, if like I have to borrow money or be in debt, 
then that's where I draw the line. Because right. you have to be realistic as well. Like if you can afford it, then by all means, because you are doing like what you said, you're feeding people and you're bringing family together. I mean that's great. But if you have to borrow money and be and start your marriage in debt, um, that's where I feel like um, it doesn't make sense. You all, you should spend within your means when it comes to your walima. And I think parents and the child they both have to have like an open conversation about about money because um, some of us we want to have big weddings but we just can't afford it and that's completely fine as well yeah, yeah. Wedding. so I really liked what she had to say about you know the whole don't overextend yourself don't overspend don't succumb to those pressures so what's written for you is written for you and that's the biggest thing that I took away and I really liked about our conversation it's so easy to get sucked in and convinced it's like if you bought a house and then you're like wait a second I gotta get some landscaping and the grass will make the house look nicer oh if I'm getting furniture well I might as well get this huge flat screen because I mean what am I I gonna do with furniture and no flat screen you get in this mentality of oh I'm already spending all this money why not just spend some on this and that and this and well if I'm doing this then I might as well add that and you just keep getting deeper and deeper into this web I then also reached out to Gita who is a friend that I made when I was doing creators for change um, I met her when I was in London um, so I talked to her a bit about marriage and weddings as well and these were her thoughts so we're getting like a tent in the backyard and just gonna order food at home and just do the thing yeah, I that, that I guess I always dreamed of. <laughs> yeah, that's I think that's the best choice, you know? Like yeah. Asking maybe like aunties or uncle who can help you out. I think Yeah. In essence of, of the togetherness, you can feel it more, I yeah. think. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Because in our wedding that's also kind of like similar because we didn't really hire like a big catering or like a big event organizer mm -hmm. they were like friends of a friends like mutual friends or our cousins or stuff okay okay so it's like um just people coming together to help to to organize mm -hmm. our wedding and to make it the best night of our lives so to okay. say yeah, yeah. and so like my memory key. personally during the ceremony is like with the closest one so i don't really remember the uh people like who 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 wasn't really close to me like yeah. the close friend the close family yeah. who was there and we shared the happiness that's what's what's my what's my memory from the wedding itself yeah. okay so. well it's like this wedding business when they hear the word wedding they'll be like this is like the the moment the event that you're gonna be experiencing only once in your life inshallah mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you have to you have to spend this 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 and that because you're not gonna be experiencing it again you know it's like they're kind of like like overpricing things yeah they're mm -hmm. playing on that sentiment that oh my god i'm gonna be missing out you once know once in a lifetime once moment. in a lifetime experience it, they're right. kind of like playing on that that's what i really hate the most kind of like manipulative in a way okay yeah no, the I agree. business itself the business itself <laughs> so it's i i feel like it's really good for you because of this COVID. you can really <laughs> save a lot of money and not being played by those people who are doing the <laughs> wedding business <laughs> No, I agree with you 100%. And you're right. Like, <laughs> if you put the word wedding in front of anything, like, you, they ask you, what is this for? Oh, it's for wedding? All right. I'm going to charge $200 instead of $100, exactly. you know? Yeah. I don't understand why you have to, like, spend so much money for, like, doing the wedding makeup. Like, yeah. what's, what's the difference between wedding makeup and a normal makeup? I don't know. Maybe you put more colors on your lips than you would normally do. Right. But that's it. So she kind of talked a little bit about vendors overcharging and I used to kind of flip flop because on one hand I had done wedding photography so I understood how much work it took and I understood the pressure and I understood the cost of you know my equipment and all that kind of stuff and so I started to understand the value of some of the services and products people were providing. However, I did feel like there was still a part of it that people were way overcharging 
for certain things. Now, my family and I occasionally talk about how we cannot believe that we were initially gonna spend the amount that we were going to, but when you're in it, you really think that that's normal, because you're like, well, how else, like, what other option is there? After you, you do all this research, you call all these places, you're like, it is what it is. It's easy for people to look on the outside and be like, oh, uh, you should have just done something simple and just gone down to the masjid and just signed papers and that's it. And in an ideal world, I think most people would be fine with that. But the thing is, you have relationships, you have family, you have friends, and that's just not how it works. So I'm happy for you that you can do that, but whatever, no, let's not get into that. But because of COVID, because we had to shrink it down and make it smaller and simpler, it ended up being way more within our means than we had initially thought. I don't wanna say we got lucky because COVID is not a good thing, but I think in some ways we did just because if you were in any other circumstance where you shrank it down and were not able to invite people, people would take that really personally. And I think most people would. So we were in a time where people were very understanding. And to be honest, I think a lot of people probably wouldn't even want to come considering the circumstances. So in looking back, I really loved our wedding. I loved how it turned out, alhamdulillah. It felt like that's what it was meant to be the whole time, regardless of how much I was planning. Um, and I feel like in the end, I kind of got what I wanted. And what made it really special is that it was at home. I actually reached out to our wedding photographer, Rahim, um, who just absolutely killed it. And if you do want to look at the highlight reel that he made from our wedding, you can check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description below. Because he's done so many weddings, I wanted to ask him if he thought that this whole COVID thing was going to start a trend of having simpler weddings and really replace the whole big fat desi wedding culture that we have. I think that COVID will change big fat desi weddings for the long term <laughs> or that whole culture it doesn't have to be desi. Um, but this whole big wedding culture, um, do you think it would change for the long term? And do you think it's better or, or would that be worse? That's a, that's a great question actually. And so I have like a two part question two-part answer. First part of the answer is my immediate response is no. You know, everyone is still going to want the big white dress. They're still going to want to walk down the big aisle. They're still going to want to have that grand ballroom. They're still going to want to have 500 people attend their wedding, right? That that instance is still going to be there. And I think culture-wise, I think um, as far as speaking for myself, like Afghan culture, they really pride themselves in having as many people there as possible, feeding that many people and just kind of showing the the grandness of this marriage. And so I think that culture aspect is always gonna be there. But on the flip side, this is my second part of the answer. I think the people that are getting married now, which are like millennials, right? <clears throat> they are kind of seeing the benefits of this, right? They're saying, hey, we can get married without dropping this much money. Like we can do this whole thing by saving so much money on not inviting the people that we haven't seen in literally like since I was two, right? Or not being able to provide food for 500 people versus like 20 people. They're able to save on venue costs. They can have backyard weddings. They can literally cut down on costs everywhere as possible, right? And so I think that's motivating individuals to first of all, just get married now, right? Just get married when it's convenient, it's cheap. They can save that money, put it towards their, you know, their life, whatever it may be. Um, and, and yeah, and I think that's something that people are starting to learn and appreciate during this time, even though, yes, we understand it is a difficult time. You know, COVID is a very, very, um, you know, detrimental thing to the human body. It's, it's, it's killing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, it's definitely hard. But at the same time, um, you have to carry on your life, right? You have to get married, you have to have kids uh, throughout this time, right? And so I think people are finding some sort of benefit when it comes down to weddings. And um, the aspect of getting married is become simplified. And I love it. I love simple weddings, personally. Um, you know, I love having the fact of only having your intimate family there and just some very, very close friends and just kind of doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, that's my personal opinion. But then again, I always have fun at these big weddings, right? Dancing in, in the dance floor and ha turning up with like my friends. Like yeah. that's always that's always a good thing too. But I think it's just, uh, it's it goes both ways, I think. And, and for me personally, I think, a lot of these new um, new wedding, you know, uh, weddings that are happening now are, are getting that um, 
sweetness of saving a little bit of money here and there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't think that it will stop in the future. I definitely think people are still going to go back to their ways. <laughs> So I really enjoyed interviewing different people. I got a lot of really great advice and I think for everybody what's important to them on their wedding day is different. I was lucky enough that I had my really close friends and family around me. I know during COVID some people can't have that. You know, if you, if you can have that, I don't think that there's really any reason to postpone your wedding um, for a party. I think it's important to identify what are the really, you know, key things for you. For me personally, uh, because I do so much work with a camera, I really wanted to hire somebody who I trusted. I didn't want to worry about that. I didn't want to worry about getting my pictures or video later and being disappointed. Um, so I put a lot of energy into that. And um, I also cared a lot about how I felt that day. So I wanted to feel good about the way that I looked and feel confident. And so if something is within your means, I think it's just important to identify what those really important things are for you. But at the end of the day, your wedding is a very short event and it is going to end. It's just going to be a very important memory for you. You know, you have to think about what it represents and be also preparing for what's coming afterwards. But that is easier said than done. One of the biggest things that people kept telling me was, oh, like don't just focus too much on wedding planning and get consumed with that and forget about everything else. But the truth is when you're wedding planning or planning an event, that's kind of the nature of it. You get sucked into it and it's hard not to. It's hard not to think about anything else because there's so many details that go into it. But as much as you can, you know, with anything that you do, you still need to remember what the purpose and the intention behind it is. I had a moment before my wedding that really pulled me back into reality. So the weekend before I got married, our 10 year old cat all of a sudden basically was dying and um, I really stopped caring about any planning or anything to do with that at all. I was so upset, but Alhamdulillah, he's doing better and he's fine. But yeah, sometimes you just have those things that just bring you back down to your senses. So yeah, the last thing that I would leave you guys with is that there is real beauty in simplicity. And honestly, even if my wedding was smaller um, and some of the material things were not there, I don't think that it would have changed anything. I think it still would have felt like a really beautiful, blessed night. And I think as long as your intentions are good, at the end of the day, it's gonna be beautiful. Anyway, that's all I have to say. This was kind of like a all over the place one, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video. If you guys enjoyed this or enjoyed the, this three part series, um, let me know in the comments and you know, tag me, tag me on Instagram, tag me on whatever, you know, repost the clips, whatever you like about the video, you know, just share it. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care now, you heard? All right, Tazzy Fake, out. Bye.